Hello. Hello to all of my friends at Rise Up. If you are seeing this, you are watching the replay. I would love to welcome you and I want to thank the team for having me today for this chat. I really appreciate you of all the places you could be, whether you're tuning in live or you are watching the replay of all the places you could be right now. You have decided to hang out with me for a few minutes. Know how much I appreciate that. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about content marketing. So I'll give people about a minute or two um, before I get right into it. I'm going to be talking about content marketing. Hopefully, I see some familiar faces from when I was uh, there in Cairo, beautiful Cairo. I think it's around 5 o'clock for you. At this exact moment, I am in um, Mexico City. In fact, I was in Mexico um, when I flew to Cairo for Rise Up. So I'm really happy to spend some minutes with you. I promise it's going to be worth it, okay? We're going to talk about Instagram. We're going to talk about email. We're going to talk about content in all different kinds of forms. I want to say hello to those of you already joining. Mai and Michael and Amar, welcome. Um, great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, I've got a few little slides for you. So let me go ahead share my screen and jump right into it. So we're going to spend the next few minutes together. Um, here's what's going to happen. The topic that I want to talk about is this, mastering your content. Who am I? I am Phil Palin. I was a speaker at Rise Up in December. Maybe I won the award for traveling the farthest. Uh, to Egypt, <laughs> to Cairo. I flew from Mexico City. I'm a digital nomad, so I spend a lot of time on the road. Um, I spend a lot of time in Latin America, so Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, places like this. But it was really special. It was a very long journey to get to um, to get to Cairo, but it was so worth it. I had such an amazing time with all of my new friends there. So I'm going to welcome you. I mentioned, yes, these are some photos from when I was visiting all of you in December. I had a blast. The Rise Up team was so awesome and accommodating and welcoming. And the reception of my talk there was just fantastic. Um, in fact, I would like to know, by the way, in the comments below, which I can see on my phone here, um, how many of you were at Rise Up? Maybe I had a chance to meet some of you. I'd love to know in the comments. Go ahead and let me know if you were at Rise Up in December. I did a talk there on branding. Know that in the live stream today, I'll touch on some of these concepts as it relates uh, to branding, but we're gonna talk specifically about your content, your content strategy, okay? And what I've also done is I've given you a link down in the bottom right-hand corner, philpallen.co slash five tips. I am sharing with you the workbook that I created for attendees at my talk in December. This has five important branding and content tips that I think are going to be really useful for you. Maybe you've already got them if you were at my talk in December. If not, I recommend in going and picking that up. philpallen.co slash five tips. And I work through five different tips that I think will be useful for you as you're building your brands. I will keep that link down in the bottom right-hand corner of my slides so that you can check that out. So that's me welcoming you. Welcome. Am I right on time? I am. Um, I want to go now and start to talk about content strategy and review what I would consider to be the two most important principles of content marketing. So let's talk about content creation, what it means in 2020 to be creating content that resonates with an audience. If we were to look at all of the good content out there, um, I want to say hello to those of you who are, or who are uh, joining now. Mahmoud, Assam, Hoda, Hanzada. Yes, never missed a Rise Up Summit. That's the spirit. 
Um, a big hello to you guys as well. We've got about 55 watching live, plus everyone who will watch the replay. Welcome. We're talking about content creation. And I'm hoping in the few minutes that we spend together today that you get some tangible takeaways as you go to you know, uh, create and perfect your content strategy. I believe that there are four consistent elements in good content. Let's start with the first principle, frequency. How often are you posting? So I am a big proponent of planning your content ahead of time. Not necessarily scheduling every single thing, but I think for you to plan is a good idea. Social media requires a lot of our time, right? And how can we get everything we need to do done in the day, but still have time to be active on social media? I think for you to start to be thinking, not just what am I gonna be posting today, but what am I posting a week from now, two weeks from now? A lot of my clients are able to actually plan two weeks out, which is fantastic if you're able to do that. Frequency. Social media sites algorithms will reward you for being consistent. Rather than posting 10 times on Instagram this week and zero times next week, I'd rather you cut the loss. So compromise five times this week on Instagram five times next week, or it could be less. It just depends on a few parameters that I'll cover in a second, okay? Frequency, how often are you posting? Ideally, you're as active as possible. Consider planning your content ahead of time so that you can sit and get as much time, you know, towards your content in one go rather than having to do it for a few minutes every single day. You wanna think about how can I maximize my marketing efforts right? How can I be consistent on social media? Number two, how do you give value with every single thing that you post? I know on social media, there are lots of instances where people are talking about themselves. You are important. Don't get me wrong. But what's more important is that you think through the lens of your audience. Okay. It's the difference of me coming on here live and saying, I'm Phil and telling you all about me, You're right? A little bit of that, but I'm here to give you value. So even when you're posting about yourself or you're posting an update about your startup, maybe you have a new, you know, you have a, a seed funding round that you want to announce. All of that is great, but reframe your thinking and make it less about me Make it more about them. Make it more about your audience. What's in it for them? That's the question you're answering. What's in it for them? Value. It was a few months ago, and I was asked uh, by a newspaper in uh, the UK about what I thought about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and their personal brand, how that was developing. And I gave a quote, and when I posted about this on Instagram, I said, here are three lessons every small business owner should gather from this, right? So I didn't just update people on what was happening in my world. I made a concerted effort to make sure that everything I post has value for the other person, okay? So when you go to post today, I want you to revisit this. Think, hmm, could I add a sentence or two that would increase how valuable this post is for someone else? Share a lesson share a fact, share a statistic, okay? Um, I would love, by the way, for you to go look at what I'm gonna post on Instagram today. I'm actually gonna put my handle in the comments. I'm gonna post today um, a carousel about email marketing. So let's go connect on Instagram. I'm just, boom, popped it in the comments below. Let's connect on Instagram. Today, I'm gonna to post about a, uh, it's a carousel. So it's a post that will give you three ways to grow your email marketing. This is an example of giving my audience value, okay? Some of these posts take a little bit longer to make, but it's worth it, right? It's absolutely worth it. So here we go. <clears throat> Let me just make sure that you guys can see me and hear me. 
Great, you can. My live feed cut out for just a second, so let me double check. I'm gonna keep going. Next one is visuals. Visuals are hugely important, okay, as it relates to standing out on social media. So visuals don't just mean a fancily designed image, okay? A visual could be a custom designed hyperlink or a custom colored hyperlink unique to your brand color. The Rise Up brand, we see yellow and we see blue, right? Um, visuals can be more subtle. It could be a button in an email blast. Think about visuals, your brand, consistency in all of the content that you create. Ideally, someone could cover up the name of whoever posted that and know that it's still from you. So those are a few quick tips on visuals. Finally, these again are the four principles of good content creation. We've talked frequency, value, visuals, and now we're gonna talk engagement. I am a big fan of planning content ahead of time. Here's why. If you plan ahead of time, it gives you more time to be present each day to engage with your audience. You're not so focused on getting the post out, right? You actually take the time to engage with an audience. That is hugely important. Anyone I've ever talked to that has grown their audience. So I work a lot, you know, with public figures, people on television, um, significant, you know, people in the world in, in all different arenas like politics, entertainment, business professionals, anyone who has a significant audience, when I've asked them, how have you grown your audience? The answer is always the same. I take the time to engage with my audience. Hugely, hugely important, okay? So I hope that you take the time to not only post, but to also engage with your audience and grow your audience. Those are the four principles of good content creation, okay? I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna move quickly so we have time for Q&A. Make sure, by the way, you're thinking about a question that you can ask me, and I'll have time for that at the end. So we talked about the four principles of good content creation. If you're joining me late, make sure you save this URL and watch the replay. Also note that in the bottom right-hand corner, hopefully I'm pointing right, right? Yeah. Um, I've given you a link, philpallon.co slash five tips will give you my five actionable takeaways as it relates to your brand. So content creation parameters. Let's talk about this. What determines whether you can be active on every single priority platform and to what degree how active you can be? Two elements for this. Time. How much time do you have to dedicate to content creation. Second, what is your business goal? Okay, time, how much time do you have in the week to dedicate towards creating content? And second, what is your business goal? Let's not get lost, you know, in the most important intention here, which is your goal. What is it you're trying to achieve as a business? Are you trying to attract more customers? Are you trying to, you know, raise money, get investors? Are you trying to grow your, your subscribers or your users on your app? What is your business goal? I need you to be crystal clear on this so that your content strategy complements your business goal. And then be realistic about how much time you have to spend on these things. Very important. Time, goal. How much time do you have? What's your business goal? Okay, so that's a little review of what I think are probably the most important, I would say, strategies or principles of good content creation. Now I want to get into some examples of good content, okay? By the way, if you have any questions throughout this, go ahead and pop these in the comments below. I am watching these. I'm watching your comments. Say hello. I'd love to get a chance to meet you. I put my Instagram in the uh, comments below. I'm also gonna put the link to get my PDF. So get my free branding PDF. Stand by, I'm just writing in the comments below so that you'll have access to this. philpallon.co slash, that way it's easier, you know? It's actually, you can see it in the comments below. Boom, 
that's in the comments. You can click that. That's hopefully a little bit easier for you. That will take you over to get the PDF. So we talked a little bit about a review on the most important principles of good content creation. Let's move along. Let's move along. Well, he says changing culture customer or changing customer culture. Absolutely. Being aware of what your audience wants. I think it's a good reminder you know, to prioritize the needs and the wants of your audience over your own. Very important to have success online. <clears throat> so here we go. Let's move right along. Um, I want to go over some examples of good content. I thought, well, let me pull some examples recently of things that have done well for me. A big hello to Mona. Wassam says, how can I build valuable content to market myself? Wassam, listen up, because I'm about to talk about that. I'm actually going to reflect on some of my own examples um, of content that has done well and why it's done well. I'm going to dissect why it's done well so that you've got some learning moments in there, okay? Ziad says, hello. Hello, back to you. Now, for those of you who attended my talk, you may know that I have a, a podcast. Podcasting is my long form piece of content, okay? So every week I uh, launch a new podcast episode. My podcast is called Brand Therapy. And every week I have someone on brand new, my co-host Lauren and I, we chat to someone, we either learn or we give someone branding advice, okay? And I had an exciting moment recently where I got a sponsorship. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, which you should, if you're interested in branding advice, you should take a listen. But I got my first podcast sponsor, okay? And I was really excited about this, but there was a funny moment to this, okay? The sponsor, the product, was a cleaning soap product for men, okay, to wash their sensitive parts. Let's just say that. Okay. This brand is designed for exactly that. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that this is my first podcast sponsor. But I thought I would have a laugh about this and I posted it uh, on LinkedIn, which is kind of funny because LinkedIn, we think it's a professional platform. It is, but people are just as eager on LinkedIn to engage with you. So this is a little excerpt from what I posted on LinkedIn. Say yes to opportunities. I got my first podcast sponsor. It's a men's cleansing wash <laughs> called Ballsy. Not a joke. Some people might say, I don't want to be publicly associated with that, but oh no, not me. And here's a little lesson I taught, right? This is the little moment, the little learning moment. I could have just broadcast to the world that I got my first sponsor, but no one really cares, right? Instead, I include a reflection in this, a lesson that someone could learn. And I say, opportunities multiply. This one sponsorship is proof that I'm worthy of sponsoring. And who knows where that could lead next? Let your imagination run wild. Okay, now you can laugh about it, right? And this, at the time that I took this screenshot, I had over 75 likes, 14 comments. I think by the end of it, this had about 6,000 views and over 120 interactions. So this one did well for me. On a platform like LinkedIn, which is a bit of a slow burn, you know, when you post on LinkedIn, you might not get a lot of engagement right away, but there's a good chance people will be liking, engaging with your material the next day or a few days into it, even a week later. So right now we're seeing on LinkedIn that people can have stronger engagement. Um, your content lives longer, uh, longer than it would on a platform like Instagram or Facebook, for example, which is where we are right now on this live. So there's a quick example of content that's done well for me. I'm going to keep going and give you some more examples. So the next one is from Instagram. Note that this looks very similar to what I'm about to post today. Okay. Every so often I post uh, a carousel with some tips that people, you know, find useful. And what this does is it drives saves. Now, let me give you what I believe are the most important metrics for you to be measuring when you're uh, keeping track of your success on social media, okay? Likes, hint, likes are not the most important thing. Likes at a surface value, right? They, they tell you what people are interested in, but there's not a lot of substance to a like. So I don't pay as much attention to those. Comments are an indication of good engagement, right? And the more engaging your content, the more likely people are going to, you know, see it 
right? If, if Instagram interprets, wow, people are really engaging a lot on this, then they'll serve it to more people. However, what I think are the two most important metrics for you to be paying attention to on your Instagram posts, and by the way, you have to have a personal profile or a creator profile in order to access this data. I recommend having or upgrading your accounts from personal to a business or a creator profile. Oops, sorry, hit the microphone. The first metric I want you to pay attention to is sends. So in this instance, 53 people sent this post to someone else because they found it valuable. 53 people are saying, have a look at this post by this guy, right? You might find this useful, okay? Useful. When someone sends your post to someone else on Instagram, Instagram algorithm interprets that as, well. Wow, this is valuable. What else can you do so that people see your content is valuable on Instagram? Here's the next one. If you give them a lot of information, so much information that they want to save your post and come back to it, that is very, very good on Instagram. So the way you want to think about this is how do I get a save? In this case, um, at the time of this screenshot, about 300 people saved this, but more than that saved it. Um, I also got a number of follows. When I took this screenshot, it was 12, but it's over 100 now, right? So people saying, wow, this is useful. I'm going to follow this guy. I'm going to get more, you know, from this guy, right? And that increases your followers. Again, mindset, what's in it for them? Every single one of you has information to share. Ways of doing things, perspectives, outlooks, tips on whatever your brand is. Think about getting those down visually on a platform like Instagram, okay? In this instance, I had 300 people who saved it for later. Tip, give them more information than they can process in that single moment, and there's a good chance they will save it and come back to it, right? And that is one of the greatest things that can happen on Instagram for you in terms of reaching as many people as possible. You wanna reach not only your followers, but you wanna reach even more than just your own followers. Right. So in this instance, 300 people saved it for later. Uh, 85 people went to my profile. I'm also a big fan of updating your link in bio. I update mine almost daily and I change the types of things that I send people to engage with. I'm not as much of a fan of platforms like Linktree, right, where you could send people in a lot of different directions. I find that the more options you give them, the less likely they are to take action. So to change your bio, you know, you could have a web on, you could have a link on your website that could be riseup.com slash Instagram. And you change the content on that one page, depending on what you're offering up or maybe guiding people to go engage with in your Instagram post. In this case, 300 people uh, save this. And that's, you know, that's, that's a good metric. That means more people are going to see it. The final one I want to show you on this, hashtags. Um, hugely important to be using hashtags. I don't have time to teach them in detail on this. Miriam says, thanks. I say, you're welcome. I don't have time to teach hashtags uh, in detail on today's training, on today's webinar. However, there's research out there, right, that suggests how to use hashtags strategically. I've got a course actually about this, and I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, hashtags, use up to 30 hashtags on your post. Don't use them for context like hashtag sunset, hashtag Cairo. Those are going to have too many posts, a quantity that's too high into the millions. By using those hashtags, your content's not going to be found. A hashtag on a post is like putting a sticky note on a piece of content so that it gets included with all the other content related to that topic. So you want to keep within, I'd say, between 10,000 and half a million. That's a wide range of total hashtag size that are ideal for you to be including on your posts that your posts get discovered by new people. In this case, 2,500 people found me through that hashtag, okay? And I took the screenshot about a day after this post went live, so actually the numbers are even higher on this. But again, principle here, create content that people find useful. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and paste this in the comments below. I'm keeping an eye on the comments. We'll have time at the end for Q&A before I wrap up, but I want to get through a few more things here. So when I think about organizing my ideas and my content, I have 12 content 
pillars. Okay. It's really a good idea to be saving all of your ideas in one place. What are the things that people ask you about? What are the services that you provide? What are the products that you sell? What are the categories in which you create? I would call these sub brands. In my case, as a brand strategist, I help people find inspiration, help them with their positioning, photography, their brand identity, their websites, content strategy. Hello, that's what we're talking about today. Growth, outreach, speaking, adventure, social, and copywriting or email. And so what I do is I save all of my ideas in one place, all of my ideas in one place. I use an app called Dropmark. Um, after this live finishes, I'll paste the link to Dropmark in the comments, okay? But um, you could use Evernote, you could use a variety of different apps to save all of your ideas, things that you spot online, color combinations that you like, ads, that you read, or maybe that make you buy a product, you should be saving those. Don't just consume, also think as a marketer, right? When something stops and grabs your attention, I need you to take a screenshot of that moment and go, why did that make me stop? Why did that grab my attention? Ola says, what visuals are best used for customer's attraction? Is there a preferred method over another? Or is it all about the content? Hola, it's a combination of both, right? So visuals should always complement the content. And actually, there's no one size fits all strategy in this case. What I'd love for you to do is test, right? Test two different visuals and learn which one performs best. As much as I love visuals, I'm a brand strategist. I design brands for a living. When I post on LinkedIn, if I post a picture, it gets a fraction of the engagement that, for example, just a text post would get. And so for me, uh, I know where visuals are appropriate and where they're not appropriate in terms of wanting to get the most traction on my content. Well, I want you to test the same thing. I want you to test the same thing and learn about what your audience wants. Very useful. So I use, um, I mentioned I use an app called Dropmark. I'll paste a link to this once we're done. Uh, in the comments of this thread, so keep an eye on that. For example, many of you are asking me questions throughout this talk, and I keep a screenshot of all of your questions in one place so that when I go to make YouTube videos, when I go to write blog posts and create content, I'm actually creating content that answers real questions that people are asking me, right? So I have a whole folder called questions. You should do this as well if you've got a product or a service, anytime someone asks you a question, save those questions in one place for reference. Don't take a screenshot and then keep it somewhere that you forget where you save it. Keep them all in one place. And this becomes very, very useful to make sure you're creating content that actually answers a question. So I wanted to give you some examples of some content that has performed well for me recently. Now I want to go into a Q&A. So go ahead and paste some of those questions in the comments below, and I will keep an eye on that. I'm just going to exit out of my slides here for a second and go full screen for just a moment. Um, hello to all of you joining. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions for me, I'll keep an eye on the comments now. Any questions related to branding, content strategy, some good some good en engagement here. Any questions you have for me, go ahead and ask them right now, and I will be happy to answer those. By the way, if you're watching this, there's a handful of you. If you're watching this, I'd love to know where you're joining from today. What city, what country are you in? Go ahead and put that in the comments below so that I know you're here. I, for one, am joining from Mexico City, where I am currently. After this, I hope to get back over to Europe, Spain this summer. Um, fantastic. Maha says, how should LinkedIn content be? Now, Maha, I, I chatted about this a few minutes ago. Um, if you go back, keep this link handy and watch the replay. I did a whole segment about LinkedIn. I've personally found that uh, text content does really well for me on LinkedIn, right? So I put 
usually in all caps, almost like a header. And then I do a reflection post. Those types of posts do really well for me. Uh, a pro tip for when you're engaging um, with your comments on LinkedIn, don't reply to everyone in the same day. Spread out your replies so that you reply once or twice today. The next day, reply once or twice on that thread. And what that does is it resurfaces that post as brand new um, every time that you repost that reply. So more people are going to see it. Great. So Nada is in Cairo. Ziad is in Egypt. Fantastic. Wissam says, how can we connect between the human customer's behavior and my products? So my answer to questions as it relates to customer research or customer awareness is always to be curious and to ask questions. If ever you're not sure about something related to your audience, please ask them. Okay. I send an email out every January. Um, every January, uh, my email says, um, I wonder if I have a screenshot of this. I'll try and show it to you. I don't know if I have it, but I, I have an email blast that says, um, Go ahead and click on the topics that interest you. Branding, um, customer experience, sales, brand identity examples, right? And I list all of the things that I talk about uh, in what I do. I showed you a, a, well, I'll show you again, actually. I'll show you a little screen of some of those things that I talk about. Here they are. Uh, it's a little small, so let me make that screen big again. Here, just give me a second. I'm going to make that screen big again so you can see it. So what I do is every January or even twice a year, I'll send an email to my list that says, let me know what you're most interested in. You know, is it positioning for brands? Is it photography? Is it growth strategy? Let me know, right? And by clicking those topics, I track when they click it. And I send them to a link on my website called philpallon.co slash thanks. Right when you when you tag someone, you have to send them to a hyperlink. So in this case, I send them to a generic hyperlink, thanking them for engaging. Um, and what I do is I track what people are most interested in. So my answer to your question, Wasam, would be: ask questions to your audience and keep track of their answers. Let's say you're launching a product with a variable: should it be this color or should it be this color? I don't think you should be making that decision. I think you should share that decision with your audience and let them become a part of the decision-making process, if possible. When your audience becomes vested, right, invested in, in the decision, they're more likely to buy. Hopefully that gives you a few ideas. Ola says, can you refer some accounts that have good content to learn from? Well, it depends on what you're wanting to learn. But I would say on Instagram, Let's connect on Instagram, by the way. I'm sharing tips and stuff on branding, and I put my link in the comments thread so that we can connect on Instagram. But look for someone who creates content that's useful for you, right? There are lots of creators that uh, share tips. Uh, I can't give you specific, specific recommendations until I know more, a little bit more about your brand, but I would say be curious about who out there is creating content that's going to be useful for you. Crafts and art, okay. I don't know as much about that space, but I know for a fact that there's a humongous craft audience, community, magazines, creators, bloggers, influencers, tons of them. And uh, a lot of them are creating great content on platforms like Instagram, okay? So I would allow yourself a few minutes to be curious about that and go and follow those people and engage and even start to think about how you can be creating on these platforms in a way that's useful for other people. You're more likely to get more followers positioned that way. Walid says, I'm working in cotton products, homeware clothes. I think the customer culture will be pivoted for now. Uh, buying culture will change. I agree with you. Right now, things are changing dramatically, drastically. So it's your task to become curious about how those behaviors are changing and how you can continue to satisfy a need like every good business does. Every good business satisfies a need, okay? That's the question I will leave with you to be thinking about. Ola, you're very welcome.
watching in the comments here to see if you guys have any questions. That's great. I think I've answered most of the questions here. I'm going to skip forward. I want to tell you, some of you are curious about content creation, and I want to tell you about my course, um, which I have that I'll offer to you guys at a very serious discount. It's not free, but um, I've made a rise up um, promo code to get uh, almost 70% off the course. Okay. So before that, I'm going to point, wait, I have to point this way down in the bottom left. You have one more chance to, before I wrap this up to get on my free five branding tips. So philpallon.co slash five branding tips. Um, this will give you some of the takeaways I gave to attendees that rise up in December. It's a handy little PDF that I think you'll find useful regardless of what your brand or your expertise is. So, okay. Um, Wassam has one more question. What are the best KPIs to evaluate performance of my content? So you need to be curious about two types of measurements, Wassam, okay? Quantitative, which is website traffic, sales, Followers on social media is quantitative, okay? Those are the numbers that you can measure more easily. You also need to be aware and you need to measure qualitative measurements, sentiment on social media, tone of voice. Are people happy when they're engaging with you? You know, is there not a lot of engagement, which means, tells me that you need to change something. Um, I would also be curious about... Um, audience loyalty or or connection beyond transaction, right? Someone buys a product, but what is going to make them come back and buy more? These are harder to measure, but they're qualitative measurements, and they're just as important as quantitative measurements. I hope that you find that useful. Well, Sam, I will share the link in just a second for Dropmark. I think I have a special link that is a referral code and it gives you a free month or something like that. I'll put that in the in the comments in a second. Some of you, if you're curious about content marketing, I'm going to share with you a course that I launched about a month ago. This might be useful for you. It's not free. It's paid, but I'm giving you the deepest discount that I've ever uh, given on it. Okay. So if you want my course, which is on content marketing, it's 20 videos, self-paced. It teaches you how to create content, plan content, and master your content. So in this, I give a template so that you can you know, create um, and you can stay ahead of the game. I've had a lot of people find the content planning template useful because you can start to be thinking about content next week and the week after. This course, it's about an hour and a half of video, uh, self-paced. So uh, let me give you the link to that if it's useful for you. philpallon.co slash five tips, by the way, is where you can go to get my free PDF with five actionable takeaways. And if you're interested in a course, if this is something that you're wanting to improve, I encourage you to check that out. I'll put the link to Dropmark here in just a second in the comments below. But if you have any remaining questions, let me know. Okay, that's the link where you can go to get everything. I'm going to click out of uh, my slides, go back to me. Um, I'll put the link to these in the questions below, but thank you so much for taking time to hang out with me today. I hope you find this useful. I'll answer a few more questions while we're here. Ziad says, what is your advice if someone wants to start um, learning, creating content from the beginning? What steps should you start with? So you want to think of it in three phases, planning your content, then creating it, right? What apps can you use or tools can you use to create your content? Finally, how can you perfect it? How can you learn what you need to learn, you know, to make it better, right? What's performing best? What's not performing as good? You need to be aware of all of these things. It's hugely, hugely important as you're spending your valuable minutes creating content. I have a course on this. There are free resources online as well that might be useful for you. Free resources are great because you don't have to pay for it. However, it can take a lot longer timing wise, right? Whenever I pay for a course, it's because I'm paying for the structure. I'm paying for the shorter version of learning what I need to know. Um, I'll put the link again to my, my course if this is interesting for you. Um, that's my course. Yes. So 
I created this course because, wait, can't see it, because um, it allows people to know and learn what they need to do to plan, create, and perfect their content. So and I'll put the link. The link to get the PDF is um, in the comments thread as well. I'll wrap up here in just a few minutes and I'll share the link in the, in the, in the comments. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. If you're just joining, know that you should check out the replay, which will be live in just a moment, but thank you all. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. My handle is down below. Say hello. If you took the time to watch this broadcast, a huge thank you to all of my friends at the rise up team. I'm such a fan of your conference and your organization. And I hope to be back in Egypt when we can all be together again for the conference. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening to all of you in Egypt and beyond. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really appreciate it.